Britt Fernandez. Hello, so lovely to be here. Thank you so much for being here and being part of our series, Catching Up With CPA Advisor. So Britt Fernandez, you are a CPA advisor for the CPA Atlantic School of Business. Uh, how about you tell me a little bit uh, about yourself and how you found yourself at CPA A? Amazing. Yeah. So I'm relatively new to the role. Um, some of you may remember Kathleen, who is my predecessor, who's uh, currently now a director with the school, which we're really happy to have her in that position. Um, I come from a kind of student support background. I've been working at different post-secondary institutions for the past five or six years, kind of doing academic advising and study abroad advising. So this was kind of the next logical step, being able to see students past graduation as they get to kind of put those degrees to use and, and start their future career. Um, so it's been a really fun transition being able to work with students at that kind of different stage of their life. Um, and although new in the role, I'm, I'm getting to quickly learn, learn all the footing. <laughs> Yeah, no doubt. And you actually, we kind of snuggled this meeting in um, when you are back in your home base, but you've been all around uh, the Atlantic provinces in the last few months, haven't you? Or at least the last few weeks. A hundred percent. Yeah. And a couple more coming up soon too, as well. It's honestly such a perfect way to see a little bit more of the province that we live in. Um, I'm like Kathleen previously as well. I am a transplant. I'm originally from the West Coast. So this has been the perfect way to kind of see a little bit more of Atlantic Canada and get to connect with students in their home places too, where they're the most comfortable. Um, it's been great. So uh, we're heading out on the road again on Monday, but uh, nice to be home for the moment. <laughs> Wonderful. Absolutely. And, and when you are on the road or, you know, even in your home base, what are some of the things that you are doing professionally speaking? So what are, where might students run into you? Ooh, that's a great question. Um, one of the nice things is that not every day looks the same, but uh, typically it does kind of end up in a little bit of cycles. So from September, kind of even to early November, you'll likely see me at some of the career and, and uh, job fairs that'll be taking place at universities. I may be coming into particular classrooms and just helping share a little bit more information on what accounting is as a career, because honestly, I think there is a lot of kind of preconceived notions of what an accountant is. Um, mm -hmm. So quite often, some of those intro classes, I might be going into those. Lots of one-on-one -on -one meetings with students because, um, as I sure we'll talk about at some point, no CPA pathway looks exactly the same. So lots of time to kind of connect one-on-one, -on -one, whether that's in person or virtually, um, and just kind of other ad hoc opportunities. There's some really cool events that take place with the university. We typically come to the row networking night. Um, lots of really cool things that you may, may see me at person at. Wonderful. So you said that you do a lot of one-on-one -on -one, um, consultations or meetings. So am I okay to link your information uh, down below and people can reach out to you directly? A hundred percent. Honestly, I'm always more than happy. That's one of my favorite parts of the job is connecting with people and kind of working on their specific pathway. So, And is there any minimum like, level or stage that a student should be in before they reach out to you? Not necessarily. Honestly, I'm happy to connect at different stages. Of course, it will look different depending where they're at. If, if they're kind of in their first years and they're trying to decide what to specialize in, that's going to be a very different conversation than you're in your fourth year, you're getting ready to graduate. Let's kind of prepare and see what your next steps are. But there is no time that's too early. We're always happy to kind of connect and wherever that conversation takes us, we're happy to go there. Wonderful. Okay. So thank you, Britt. Part of this catching up with series is making sure that we go a little bit deeper into topics that perhaps we skim the surface on, but that also means that we're cutting out some breadth from the previous discussion. So if anybody here comes away with, oh, I really wish I would have heard about this, I would almost pause right now, go back, listen to the meeting um, with Kathleen. And right now, Britt and I are going to go a little bit deeper into a few key elements. And no worries, uh, if you still have questions after this, uh, we have comment section, uh, we have Brit's contact, and of course you can always contact me or leave comments. So lots of opportunities, but you just might wanna say, hey, what about this, what about this? And that was likely uh, covered at least in breadth in the first podcast. 
So one of the topics I wanted to talk with you, Britt, was something that we were chatting with a little bit before we started rolling here. And that is one of the biggest, you know, or most frequent items that has kind of come up in uh, the recent little bit. And that is questions surrounding timing. And in fact, just before we get into this, I'll let you know about an anecdote my first year teaching. Actually, it was my second year. So it was the first year after my first group of students graduated and it was the fall time. And all of a sudden I received a panic email in about September. Do you think, do you know where this is going, Britt? Oh, I think so. Oh no. Yes. <laughs> yes. So the student had missed the fall registration deadline. Um, they, even though CPA PEP core one doesn't start until in the fall term until like October, sometimes even like mid October or beginning, uh, they were in September and were like, how did I miss this deadline? I wasn't even aware of. So, um, and, and that deadline would be even earlier if a cat, if a student, um, wanted to go right from Dal or their undergraduate right to core one in May of that same year. So how about you tell me a little bit about the timing applications? Do they even have to apply if they have a job? Like run with this. Amazing. We get this question a lot. And honestly, I know it can be one of those kind of confusing spots for students because, from the CPA Atlantic School of Business perspective, students have a ton of flexibility. So we do have four different intakes per year. Um, so they're never too far away from one. And typically one will start sometime in January. One will start either late April or early May. Uh, there'll be one starting in kind of July in the middle of summer. And then there's one that starts either late September or early October. Um, so once again, from our perspective, for students who are graduating, they do have a lot of opportunities and flexibility. They have that intake that takes place in late April or early May. If they want no break at all and they want to continue straight on, have that momentum after graduation, um, that is a possibility. Or if they want one semester off or if they want a couple, I know the majority of students who are working at firms, a lot of them will want them to aim towards that September, October intake. Um, so it's a great opportunity for students to connect first with their employer and see if they have any recommendations. Um, but in general, with our application, uh, you will have to apply to us. Even if you're in a CPA stream at your workplace, we still do need to make sure you meet all those prerequisites, get you access to all your course materials. So I'd encourage you to begin your application process with us about four to six weeks in advance of when you're hoping to start. So whatever that registration deadline is, um, you'll be starting that process a little bit in advance. So for example, if you are going for that September, October intake, you're probably going to be reaching out to us in the summer. If you're planning to have no break at all between when you finish your classes and when you start your CPA studies, you'll be reaching out when you're in your final semester. Um, so do just give yourself a little bit of time. If you have any questions or if you find yourself in a situation similar to the anecdote that you shared and for some reason you missed a deadline, still do reach out to us. We're happy to kind of share that information on what the next process would be or if there's any flexibility there. Yeah, no, and you bring up a really good point. So when you apply to the school, um, and just to kind of take a step back, um, when you're getting your CPA designation, there's the education, the evaluation, and the work experience. So if you have an uh, approved path so kind of two streams within that uh, education, for me, within that work experience, there's the approved path and the experience verification. The approved path is what uh, like the large firms and some of the large employers and government offices will have for a CPA path student. But just because you're there, that means your work experience will be guided, but you still have that education and that evaluation that Britt mentioned. So now to kind of go back, 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 um, when you apply to the school for your education and subsequent evaluation, you not only have to apply and register for that module, but if you're not part of the school, you actually have to apply to be a part of the school. So it's, that's why she's saying like six to eight weeks and like really give yourself, um, a good chance. But then my, some of my students in fourth year will say, well, I'm in the middle of the term, Brit. How can I apply to something when I don't have it? So what should they do? Should they wait till they finish the term and just miss out on it? Or is there something that they can do when they're still in the middle of their last set of prerequisites? No, I'm so glad you asked that question. Um, so totally okay if you're wanting to queue up those classes so that they continue straight on into each other. What we'll do when you're applying is we'll ask for an unofficial transcript. 
we'll be able to use that to offer you conditional admission to the program. And then once you're graduated and your degree is conferred, whether that's a few months down the road, we'll then request that you have an official transcript sent to us. But in the meantime, you can still get started on your processes, process, classes, sorry. Um, we can still get you processed and access to all those different materials. Um, so don't hesitate to reach out just because you're still completing some of those courses, that's perfectly okay. One thing I will note though, is because the deadlines are a little bit different, I know this year in particular, our courses start on April 29th. Dell's official day of uh, releasing the grades isn't until early May. So in that case, it may mean that in that kind of final weeks, you might be needing to get some letters from your professors just confirming that you've got at least 60% in those classes, just because those final grades won't be released by then, but there's still opportunities. Do connect with me and we'll work with you to find a way to get you started if that's what you'd like to do. Perfect. Perfect. No, that's really that, like that timing thing, because that happened last year as well, which can add so much extra stress. Um, and I want to take this moment and kind of really reemphasize that, you know, your, your part of your role and your job and what makes you, um, I know you're going to excel at it is looking at those ways that how can we work with the learners to have, you know, meet your common objectives, right? It's not like CPA Atlantic, as well as CPA West and CPA Ontario and Quebec, CPA PEP uh, in general, um, professional education program in general, wants candidates to come in and they want to experience and become designated accountants. So our interests are all aligned in that sense. It's, but it's also not about letting anybody and everybody in to ensure that there are those standards and that rigor that is upheld. But if it means a matter of days, and there's a potential workaround, then, you know, you as a school are able to kind of use your professional judgment and work with the candidates in order to meet those objectives. So it's really nice to know that there is a conversation that can extend. And really, if at, there's a point where really nothing can be done, well, then at least potential candidates, um, future candidates and current students can really know, okay, literally I've tried everything. My advisors tried everything. CPA Atlantic wanted us on, but hey, it just wasn't the right timing this time. And fortunately within the next few months, uh, cause there's an intake every four months, um, I'll be on my path, you know, right around the corner. Exactly. Um, I'm so glad you highlighted that. Uh, we're, we're here to help and we're here to kind of help make this uh, we recognize it's a, it's a busy time when you're finishing up your classes and also an exciting time. So we're here to kind of try and ease some of that stress and burden wherever possible. And just to wrap up my anecdote of that uh, student. So one of the things I did do was connect him with an advisor and they were able to work through it. And he was able to start at the desired time that he wanted kind of right at the nick of time. So it worked out, um, you know, he had to, I think, pay a little bit, you know, extra or like, you know, rush some of the transcripts and like do some stuff. So it really was like a partnership between the advisor and him, but it wasn't, you know, it wasn't over just because there was a date on a website. So you know, thank you and yeah, you know, thank the system. And, you know, um, he knows who he is and he will, <laughs> he will always be early every, every other time. But I do want to kind of circle back to one other thing um, that you and I had talked about uh, before, and that is about the prerequisites when applying um, to apply to the school and have your transcripts audited. So one of the reasons why I'm so stoked to be here at Dal is because I'm a part of an accounting group where we are, you know, roughly 50% um, academically focused uh, and scholarly focused and about 50% fa uh, faculty focused on the CPA profession. And so within that, I am so proud uh, that, you know, when taking your BCom in accounting through Dell, you will come out, as long as you meet those minimum grade requirements, you will come out with all of your prerequisites to start the next day at um, CPA professional education program, the graduate level accounting through CPA Atlantic, um, or any of the other regions, if you so, should choose to move to Alberta, uh, or Quebec or Ontario. So Britt, I would just love your stamp of approval that if they follow the guidelines that's on the website, that they would be okay. 100% sounds amazing. Um, just make sure you're following those courses. And as you already mentioned, meeting those minimum grade requirements, but we see many successful Dal students come into the program directly from university every year. So it's great that no additional studies are needed. Everything is automatically built into your degree. So be talking to your academic advisors, be talking to your professors, you're, you're on track, you're already in the progress of getting what you need for the CPA designation. 
Oh, Brett, it was uh, a little bit heartbreaking. So we have a capstone course and um, like I was about to plug different courses and like plug our different professors, but honestly, like I am, I'm so biased towards all of them that we would just then talk about the podcast. Like this would no longer be about the purpose. But one thing I do want to say is that um, anytime a program, and yes, this does happen at Dell, but there are other programs out there that do it that have case writing and they have an experience, you know, in their undergrad to do case writing, because um, as you, as you know, um, there's a lot of case writing in CPA PEP and candidates may or not, may not have been aware of that before they start the program. A hundred percent. Having even that background at the undergraduate level can help set you on the road to success because yes, your final exam, common final exam, which some of you may have heard of before, uh, it doesn't have any multiple choice questions. It is going to be all case-based analysis. So the earlier that you can start getting that experience with it and working through that, getting feedback from your professors as you are right now, um, that's all just going to be helpful when you get to the designation, you'll be feeling that much more confident. But do, of course, remember, just like at, at university there, you, you will have supports from your instructors and things here as well. We're here to help make sure you succeed. Um, but that early initiation, getting a little bit of experience at it is perfect. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. So you're going into a number of classrooms and it's partly education about what the program is and the experience verification and the approved path and all the different like ways in which you can become a CPA. Um, what happens if somebody doesn't know that they want to be a CPA from the moment that they enter high school? or the moment that they complete their first undergrad. Is that over? Like, do they have to go do another four-year BCom and um, and restart everything? No, 100% not. And actually, we're finding it more and more. And honestly, that's perfectly okay. I know I wasn't someone, I didn't go into high school. I didn't even start university knowing what I was going to do as my future career. And I think a lot of people don't. Um, and that's one of the great things about the CBA designation is that there is a lot of flexibility and there's a lot of different pathways. So if you came from a different major, if you even came from a completely different degree, like a Bachelor of Arts or a Bachelor of Nursing, um, there are always ways to kind of get there and begin your CPA designation. So we do offer preparatory courses that are part-time online courses that give all those kind of core courses that you would need to be successful when you actually begin your CPA studies. Um, so there's always opportunities, uh, whether you're missing one course because you came to declared your accounting major a little bit later on or switched majors, or whether it's just you come from a completely different background. There's always those opportunities to kind of become a CPA. So that is another kind of group of students that could come to you possibly. So we have our like intro accounting students, we have our like outro <laughs> accounting students, and then we have our neuroscience students or, you know, our liberal arts, students, like any student and it's almost like, hey, I think I'm interested in this, but I kind of want to do the cost benefit as far as time and actual cost of doing those prerequisites and then seeing kind of how that works in. And so they could reach out to, to you as well. A hundred percent. Oh yeah. my I'm gosh. happy okay. to chat through with them. Um, I mean, of course, as you mentioned, their cost and their time are going to really vary depending on where they're coming from in their academic history. If they needed all those courses, that's still definitely a possibility, but we'll be looking at a little bit longer of a timeline there. But that's where I'm happy to kind of sit down, have a chat, have a look at what they would likely need and what the kind of overall timeline would be looking like for them to get that, get those letters. <laughs> that's fabulous. Yeah, because uh, so I teach in the CPA uh, program as well. So special learning and online facilitating. And I just, this one student, like just, or candidate, CPA candidate really sticks out. And she was, you know, halfway through day one. Um, and like, this was a candidate that was like very much like, you know, answered questions, but wasn't overpowering. And she was like in it to win it. And at lunch, she told me that she was, she felt really out of place in core two because she's a neuroscience undergrad and then she did the preparatory uh, or sorry she did um a few select classes but she just felt like well I'm not you know a real accounting student or something and then we talked through it and we you know she had some success she had the prep and then I was like well do you see any kind of parallels between the two and she's like yeah and I was like so do you feel like how have you found the transition from the preparatory classes to prep and she's like oh no it was fine it actually like helped me out and I was like okay so like 
like, what is your issue? What is your issue? Like not to be rude, but she was like, oh, I just feel like people are, might be at an advantage because they knew from the beginning. And I'm like, I actually think that you have an advantage because you have another degree that can complement your knowledge. And then you, then you decided to take this other path and kind of layer on and kind of be able to kind of go deep in these topics and have exposure to CPA professional education like classes um, with that knowledge in prep and then transition in. And because to me, she did not stick out in a bad way. And towards the end of the class, I could kind of see not only was she feeling like she fit in, but I could really see her kind of taking a leadership role within within her group. Um, so I just want to put it out there that like to hear that. <laughs> yeah, well, and like, sorry. And it wasn't just, it was, it was her. And, but it was just that yeah. it's so disheartening, like to know that somebody thinks, oh, I wasn't born thinking I'm an accountant. <laughs> so what if I should be here? And it's like, yeah, like, because we do have all these different avenues. And honestly, we're hearing that from employers too. I mean, I can't speak from all employers, but sometimes they are looking for people with multiple different kind of backgrounds and stuff too. So it's not that they're only focusing on accounting graduates. I mean, that's wonderful. And that's a, that's a great group that they are looking to recruit as well. But sometimes having that different lived experience and having that additional learning, it can also be a great asset. And it doesn't mean that you're different in a bad way. <laughs> no, absolutely. And then on the other end of the spectrum, we have people that have done their accounting undergrad and they have been like, I, I love the classroom experience. I'm going to go do my Queens graduate diploma. I'm going to go do my U of T, either a graduate diploma or master's. Um, I, or I'm going to go to U of S or I'm going to go to U of A and do their master's. Um, and then they're just like, oh, but it looks like I still have to do some PEP, some CPA professional education program. And then they come if they're in the Atlantic provinces and then are enrolled later on. So Brett, just to confirm my knowledge, I believe that if they do um, you know, accredited graduate diploma course, typically it would cover core one and core two. Is that correct? That is correct, but there is actually a bit of variation. Some of them will even take a little bit further. I've seen ones that will take you directly to the common final exam. I've seen ones that'll yeah. take you to those capstones where you'll come. So it does slightly yes, depend no, on those programs. Yes. Absolutely, yeah. No, so you're right. Um, so I believe it's like Queens and U of T, um, their graduate diplomas will actually be core one, core two, and tax and assurance. And then the following year, you'll do capstone one, capstone two, and write your common final exam. Whereas some, like, I feel like it's maybe- Carlton, I think, is one of the, like, straight it, to the final. Yeah, so Carlton wouldn't even register necessarily for a CPA PEP module. They would just re uh, register within the school in order to write this common final exam. So again, if these students are like, I love, I love in-person, post-secondary institution accredited classes, I'm going to go and do all these, like, certificates or diplomas or- um, master's programs. And then they are like, what do I do now? Or even if they are like, I think then I don't have to see you. Can they still see you? Of course, a hundred percent. I mean, and those are wonderful options. There's lots of great reasons why you would choose one of those programs. If you really want that full-time education experience, if you, if that's the kind of route you want to go, or if you want to have some of those ones that give you the MBA and get you on track to your CPA, you can have kind of those two or almost two designations with that. So feel free to come have a chat. We're happy to kind of work with you based on your preferences and see what might be the best fit for you. Um, for some pe people, uh, the, taking the courses all through us will be the best bet because you can start on your career. But some people, like that education is key and having that full-time experience may be the best bet for you. Yeah, completely. I know for myself, um, there was fewer choices in actuality. And quite frankly, um, I like I couldn't afford it because there typically tends to be a price differential, like a quite a substantial double or triple um, with the in-person post-secondary um, items. So that's one of the reasons why I came and I teach for CPA PEP. So if um, if I sound biased, I am in a sense in this that I believe it and I put my like lots of my life's energy towards it, but I also recognize like it's it's a learner first. Uh, just not recognizing the privilege that it would be for some learners to be able like, oh, I really want to do my master's um, and it's a privilege or it's possibly an extra uh, burden in, in the sense of the financial aspect. So um, are you still seeing with employers that typically some employer, most employers, um, especially with the approved path, are compensating for 
uh, the first time exam fees, first time common final exam fees, and first time through a module. Is that still pretty common? I'm still finding that's very common. I'm also starting to see because accountants are in such high demand, I'm actually starting to see a handful of employers even willing to help fund studies through the preparatory courses too. So for those students who maybe not, aren't necessarily an accounting major, there are a handful of employers that are also considering even funding at that level too. So uh, you are in high demand, you do have options <laughs> um, that is to get your studies. That is really good to know because I'm thinking of one student in particular who was in my intro accounting class last semester and who is finishing up her degree and is like, I want to be an accountant. And so we talked a little bit about prep for the preparatory classes. And, um, you know, I believe she, you know, we'll talk offline, but she either spoke with you or perhaps um, before you came with Kathleen. And yeah, she has her path forward and super happy to have that information. And hopefully, yeah, it'd be awesome if uh, some of it was funded or supported. So that, thank you for sharing. That is that is excellent. Now, is it still the case that typically if a student um, had a job with an employer and they wanted to do one of the graduate diploma programs that did cost significantly more, that then it becomes a conversation um, and typically it's funded up to the CPA PEP amount? Typically, yes. That one does vary, I think, a little bit more widely in my experience, but I have been seeing students been getting some some sort of funding for those for as well, as well as um, flexibility to have that time off to do those full time yeah. studies too, and come back to a, a job yeah. that they know is secure and they can yeah. kind of continue with their practical experience. So um, I am still seeing that the employers are appreciating students taking those programs, uh, but the funding will vary a little bit. Fabulous. So it's just nice to know, like if I was, oh, you know, I've never been accused of being quiet uh, at the same time earlier on in my career, I definitely didn't necessarily have the language to advocate for myself in a way that I felt comfortable. So hopefully um, a lot of our catching up session is a way in which can spark a conversation. Hi, employer. Um, I heard from, you know, Sam's podcast with Britt, with CPA Advisor, you know, that they, um, employers might be willing to pay up to the equivalent of the CPA PEP if I went to uh, my graduate diploma. Is this something you would consider? So for those of you out there or Samantha 15 years ago, you know, if that's something that you are interested in pursuing in whatever shape or form, um, you know, using some evidence this is evidence and then having that discussion because as like an employer, as somebody that is a candidate advocate, um, you know, both of us, it really never hurts to ask as long as you're doing it in a humble and informed way. A hundred percent. This is something I wish that I had known that, that job interviews and things like that can be more of a two-way conversation. As long as you're polite, feel free. Like you are your own advocate. Um, I'm so glad that you're sharing this information with students. And I wish someone had told me when I was back then too. <laughs> Especially like, would you consider? Because then at least somebody's like, nope, not considering. And you're like, okay, but well, you're that's not. that's the like, worst threatening. case scenario. And it's still not the end of the world. The worst they can say is no. And then you still have a great working relationship with them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> nope, okay. <laughs> Moving on. Oh man. Okay. Well, we are coming to the end of our catch up session. So, um, before I kind of ask, um, hmm, I just I want. There's so many places that we can go with this. I guess um, I before we wrap this up, Britt, I just really want to know: is there not just one single most important thing, but just something that comes to mind, because I know there's a lot of important things that you would like to kind of a, a message that you would like to leave our potential candidates with, um, or, you know, to, yeah, just a final party message. Yeah, I think, I think my final message for today, we'll try and go a little different than Kathleen last time, is just the flexibility. We already talked about the flexibility in terms of start dates, but I also want to talk about your, your life having a bit of flexibility. I know coming out of a university degree, some people may not be thrilled about the idea of committing to more education, but know that the CPA designation does have a lot of different pathways once you're a part of it too. So you can take semesters off. You have up to six years to complete your education. If you have a special wedding in the summer, you can be taking that summer off. You could be taking an extended offering of a course and spreading it out over two semesters so that you have a lighter workload during busy seasons. Um, so do know that even if you're considering signing on for more education, it doesn't necessarily have to be your 
full full time life, you will be able to have a successful career, you'll be able to have personal commitments while you're doing this. So please know that that is an option. And once again, that's another great way to kind of come connect with us and we can talk about those different options that are available. Wonderful. Thank you. And now I'm um, coming full circle to what you mentioned at the beginning of the podcast, uh, when you, you know, walk into classrooms and you're, you know, helping to educate people what uh, the future and what the present of accounting looks like. I just, I'm dying to know what are some of the preconceived notions of accountants out there? So I'm just, I'm just very, very curious. I honestly think I think a lot of people think that you spend all day just staring at spreadsheets that you're working just in those traditional big five firms. And honestly, those are great places to work, but that's not the limit of it. There are so many different places that you can be working, whether that's in uh, not-for-profits or in industry. Uh, there are so many different companies that employ CPAs that people don't even imagine. Things like Cirque du Soleil, the Toronto International Film Festival, they all have CPAs working for them. So I think it is that really unique opportunity to take a great career and something that's going to give you that progression and that salary eventually and things like that, but also to apply it to a field that you're interested in too. Every type of uh, office and organization is going to need accountants and CPAs. And so you're not necessarily going to be stuck staring at a spreadsheet, doing something that doesn't interest you. You can combine those multiple interests. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you. Um, I got quoted in, I got slightly misquoted um, in a CPA Canada magazine. And the, the quote was, we're not that dork sitting in, um, in the, <laughs> Uh, in the corner, but I, and I forget uh, in the in the cubicle. Like, oh, I really should have this here. But it's like we're out there doing cool stuff and you know making an impact. And the misquote was, I'm like, we're out there doing cool shit. Like we really are. I'm on my third career with one designation, and yeah, I got a couple other degrees, but that's only when I landed where I really want to be for the rest of my life. Up until then, I you know was an internationally independent consultant. I worked in a firm. I worked um, as a CFO of a small you know company. I worked in a big company. You know, there's like there's so many things. And that was in my twenties, you know, like I just, I, I see this career and it's not like, I, I'm going to differ with some of my colleagues sometimes where they'll be like, Oh, we need to like appeal to the youth and like, say it's cool. I'm like, I don't like, it can be cool. It can be not cool. If you want to be in the cubicle and you want to type away and you want to debit and credit all the time, absolutely. It's here for you. If you want something else, that's there for you as well. So it's not about being like cool or not cool. I'm like, do you want to make a lot of money? Do you want to make a lot of impact? Do you want to do a little of one, a little of either, or ideally both? Then this is the profession for you. So um, you got me all riled up. I love our talk today. And Amazing. Britt, like, thank you for coming on. Thank you so much for having me and giving me this opportunity. It's such a pleasure to, to meet and chat with you. Likewise, I'm sure we'll chat soon. Okay. Bye, Britt. Bye.